troops from neighboring states reinforcing this poverty-stricken country's regular army. The numbers of this international force now exceed 1,000. And with the military build-up come claims from humanitarian and diplomatic sources that foreign mercenaries are being brought in by both sides. Not only that, as President Francois Bozizé was expressing optimism over peace talks, the UN Children's Agency, UNICEF, was accusing his militias and the rebels of using child soldiers. This general from Congo Brazzaville is Deputy General Secretary of the regional grouping of 10 states that's brokering peace talks. I put the UNICEF claims to him. War is expensive. Child soldiers are cheap, especially when they're hungry. We have information that children have been used by one side or the other, but we can't confirm it. There have been many violations of human rights. No one's surprised to hear those words on the streets of the capital. Peace talks in Libreville next week may have stopped the rebel march towards this city for now, but few are convinced that a lasting peace can be achieved. A presidential advisor told me that any talk of the rebels actually taking this city should be regarded as utter fiction. But many people here think that is political spin. There is still a mood of fear. And this is a country with a history of coup d'etats. And peace has been unattainable for decades. We have to end this with the rebels once and for all. I don't like discussion. They came to destroy our country. How can we talk with people like that? All the parties must engage with the government. They must be sincere because we know that every time there's talks, no solutions follow. And he's right. This riverside city is sick of peace accords that fail and its people are tired of conflict that drowns any hope of raising their lives out of the destitution that comes from living in one of the poorest and most underdeveloped nations on earth. Andrew Simmons, Al Jazeera, Bangui in the Central African Republic.